Now I'll introduce you to our second Sunday team. If I could have all of our panelists turn off their mute buttons right now so that we can say hi to everyone and they can see your faces. So say hi when I call it your name. Today we've got Diane. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. We also have Aubrey. Hi, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. We've got Marco. Hi, guys. Happy Mother's Day. We have Sarah. Hi, happy Mother's Day. And we have Osana. Hello, I'm so happy you're here. Now that you've met everyone, let's dive right into the art making. Today's project is called Draw Like an Artist. It's inspired by Richard Diebenkorn's sketchbooks, which you can flip through online on the Cantor's Museums from Home webpage. And it's also inspired by Mother's Day. Richard Diebenkorn kept many sketchbooks to draw the people and places around him. Sheltering at home provides us a great opportunity for all of us to be like Diebenkorn and draw upon our familiar surroundings as a source of inspiration. Here are two sketchbook drawings that Richard Diebenkorn made of his wife, Phyllis, who was also a mother. In today's project, we will be making line drawings of a mother or someone you would like to honor on Mother's Day just like Richard Diebenkorn did. The first thing we'll need to do is gather some supplies. You will need a photocopy or a photo of a mom or another person you would like to honor. You can make a photocopy by using a printer for the easiest version of this project. Don't worry if you don't have a printer to make a photocopy though, because we'll also show you alternative versions of the project where you can draw from a normal photo or from a live person. The next thing you'll need on the list is paper. Normal paper that you put in a printer is perfect. You will also be using a pencil and an eraser, a marker, and some tape. The last thing on our list is a window. This will come in handy when we're tracing. Now that we have our supplies, we'll be taking you through three versions of the activity. Version one requires a photocopy and a window. This is the easiest place to start. However, if you don't have all the supplies for version one, we will also guide you through versions two and three right after. Version two, the drawing is made just by looking at a photo, and version three demonstrates drawing from a live person. Version one, drawing from a photocopy. Here's a picture of how your photocopy will transform into a line drawing. We'll be outlining the photocopy to identify important forms of the face. Then we'll trace it onto a new paper with pencil and go over it with pen. Step one, tape your photocopy to a window and outline its face in marker. I'll give you a moment to tape the photocopy to a window and to grab your marker before I play the video. In the video, Diane will show you how she draws on her photocopy that's taped up to the window. As you draw in the forms of the face, notice the shape of the face and each of its parts. Think about connecting all the forms with a continuous line. Try to imagine that you are touching a real person's face For this video, I'm using a pretty thin marker pen. You can use any marker that you have on hand. Black seems to work the best because it's easiest to see. When I'm drawing in, I pretend that I'm following the actual forms on the face. And I'm only using the ones that I think are the most important to capture the idea of the face. Here's the jawline. Now I'm doing the eyebrows. The eyebrows have their own shape, drawing in the whole shape. And now the eyes, I use several different lines to make the eyes rather than one continuous line.
one for the top lid, one for the bottom lid. And now I'm going to make one line for the nose. It's easier if we just represent the nose with one line. We want to do just the minimum amount of line that's necessary to show what the face looks like. Oops, make the lip a little thicker there. The edge of the face. Notice each face and each person's features are shapes and all the shapes are slightly different on each person. So that's what makes your portrait unique, is that you're following each person's specific form. Thank you, Diane. Step two, tape a blank piece of paper over the photocopy that's on the window and trace it in pencil. Now place a blank sheet of copy paper over the first drawing. Using a pencil, draw along the edges of the underlying form. This is the basis for the final ink drawing. You will see that the pencil line and the ink line not only look different on the paper, they also convey a different emotional feeling to the viewer. Also, I noticed when I use the pencil, it has a different feeling on the paper. The pencil grabs the paper and the marker seems to glide across the paper. So enjoy these two different uh, feelings of the medium you're using, which is the materials that you're using to make the drawing. And slow down so that you can take time to make each feature and really see what's underneath. Here's the lip line. I'm making one line in the middle, one on the top, and one for the bottom part of the lip. And the three parts, the three lines, make together one bigger shape. And there's the jawline again, and the ear. Did you know that each ear is unique on different people? It's like a fingerprint. Wonderful. And now for step three, draw over the pencil lines with the black marker. You may decide to ignore some of the pencil lines and erase them when you're finished. The marker I'm using is a brush type marker. It's called a pit artist pen with big brush. And it's um, got a thinner point on the tip and wider at the base. So you can make a very, you can vary the line a little bit depending on how you, how hard you press the marker. It also has a more paintbrush-like quality to it. Outlining the form really makes it look different from a photograph. Thank you, Diane. Now let's take a look at art from one of our student museum educators. Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Morello and I'm one of the panelists for the second Sunday. Um, this is the line drawing that I made of my mom for Mother's Day. My mom's my role model and my support system, so I'm really excited to give this to her and just tell her how much she means to me. One of the things that I enjoyed about creating this line drawing is that sometimes less is more. When I started off, I included a lot of details in pencil, uh, but when I used marker, I went much simpler, and I think it turned out even better. So thank you so much for coming to this second Sunday, and to all the amazing moms out there, happy Mother's Day. 
Hey everyone, this is Aubrey. I wanted to say that we are about to go on to version two of the project. But for now, I think it's okay to go on to version two. Thank you, Aubrey. All right, let's dive into the second version of the project. And this is if you don't have a photocopy, but you do have a photo. So it's drawing from a photo. First, we'll do the drawing in pencil, as you can see on the left, and then we'll go over it in pen. Here's step one. Look at your photo and use a pencil to draw the outline of what you see on your piece of paper. In art terms, a contour drawing is created by making lines that define the form or edge of a person or thing. In this drawing, I am essentially making an outline of the face shapes. By using long, continuous lines and by slowing down and looking carefully, I am able to get my eye and my pencil to move at the same speed. So this, in this uh, demonstration, the pencil is um, not only moving more slowly, but what I'm doing is translating the information I'm seeing in the photograph to the paper. Not only is it a bigger drawing than the paper, so that my brain has to make the adjustment and the eye and hand are doing that, so it's a little more work than our first example, but um, it's also observation. So what I'm doing is by keeping my pencil on the paper, you notice I never move my pencil away from the paper because that keeps me focused and, and it's a way of keeping track on the photo so I don't lose my place on the drawing, sorry. So I don't lose my place. And by making the line continuous, I can see relatively speaking where each form connects to the next form. That also helps me keep things um, coordinated on the drawing. So I'm making a line now for the bottom of the eye and the top, the eyelid, keeping my pencil very near to the paper, lifting it only a little bit and then drawing in the eye. Now I'm making the eyebrow and sometimes I'll even connect the forms very lightly so that I can gauge the distance between the forms. So I'm measuring with my eye and with my pencil, the distance between forms and also the relative shape of the forms. Here's the mouth and I'm leaving my pencil on the paper the whole time now and just picking it up, putting it down again and connecting even the two eyes to see how far they are from the nose how far each eye is from the nose and how, um, what the angle is in relation to each other. Now the eyebrow in. Keeping my pencil very close to the paper, close to the drawing. Following the hand. And the hand doesn't exactly look like a hand, but we know it's a hand because of the, the placement and the idea of it. Now we're going to do the inking in part next. Thank you, Diane. So step two, trace over the pencil lines you like with marker. Now I am using a marker to ink in the pencil drawing. I am making some artist choices and not following all the pencil lines exactly. I may erase the pencil lines later or just leave them. Right, so you don't need your drawing to be perfect and you want it to be a little more fun and, and loose at this point. So in, start enjoy using your marker and just pick the lines that you think are the best lines from your pencil drawing. Uh, you can tell when you stand back which lines look more like a face and just put those in first. If you need to add more lines, you can always add more lines with the marker. It's, it's uh, better to put fewer, mark, fewer marks in first and then add as you need to. So now I'm putting in just the essential features. So we know it's a person. 
the eyes, the nose, eyebrows, mouth, ears, and head shape. And the hair is kind of fun. I like drawing her hair because it was so wavy, like curly. Uh, waves of the ocean, almost waves. And now we're drawing in the eye to show what, in that shows which direction she's looking and leaving just a little highlight part. Now the top line of the lip, the middle of the lip, where the two lips come together, and the bottom edge of the lip. Just the basics. Now the jawline, very important. And now I'm going to have some fun drawing in the beads that she's wearing. I didn't do this on the pencil sketch, but I think I want to have some fun and do that now with the pen. So this is a time to add some details if you want. And then I'm going to ink in the hand, the hand shape, not being very detailed about it. Just to get the idea of a hand rather than the actual drawing of a hand. Now some fun squiggles, because they're fun. And voila. Thank you, Diane. Now let's take a brief break to take a look at some of the art that was made by another one of our museum educators. Hi everyone, it's Melissa. I wanted to share with you all some of the art that I made today for Second Sunday. I chose to draw a picture of my mom. As you can see in this picture, she's holding a sign that says most beautiful mom. It's actually based on a picture that I took of her a couple years ago when we were eating at a restaurant for Mother's Day. And the restaurant had a sign that said most beautiful mom for all the mothers who are celebrating to take a picture with. Here's the original picture that I took of her. As you can see, I had to trace with a big brown marker so that I could put this on top and trace the lines over. I also wanted to share with you a different picture that I made for Second Sunday today. It's a tracing of a photo of my kitchen from my old house, where I grew up talking to my mom, sitting at the kitchen counter, helping her cook, learning about her life, and telling her about everything that was going on in mine. Thank you so much for sharing your artwork with us today and for letting me share my artwork with you. I hope that you've been enjoying Second Sunday and I wanted to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Hi again, everyone. Aren't these Stanford students just amazing? They really help bring the art project to life. Before we move on to version three, I wanted to check in again. How did we feel about version two? Were there any parts that were unclear or that you want to listen to again? Please feel free to let us know in the Zoom chat. And if you have just joined us, welcome. If you would like to hear about what you have missed, please schedule a private session with one of our student museum educators and they will be able to catch you up once again through the Zoom chat. And I think we will now go on to starting version three. Hi everyone. I'll introduce you to the third version of the project, which is drawing from a live model. It's a little more difficult to do than the first versions, but it's great fun because you got to interact with the person that you're drawing. First, you can draw your model in pencil, then you can go back over the lines in marker, just like we've been doing before. Here's a video of me trying it out with my mom. Hi everybody, this is me and my mom, and I'm about to do a line drawing of her. So I'm starting out with a blank piece of paper and I'm looking at her face and I'm seeing the shapes and trying to translate them into lines. I'm starting right here with her eyebrows, kind of the arch of them. And now I'm moving on to her bangs that I see coming across her forehead. And although I'm not drawing every single hair piece I see, I'm drawing the outline of them and it really captures what the hair looks like. Now I'm going on to the other side of her face. And coming back up. And with a few simple strokes, it's amazing. You can already start to see the face forming. 
Now I'm doing her earrings that I see coming off of her ear. And now I'm working on her nose. And I see that her nose kind of connects up with her eyebrow, so I draw that line connecting the two. You can always take a step back and look at what you've done and then come closer. It usually helps with the drawing process because you're learning as you're going. You're learning what you're seeing. And a lot of artists do this in order to help them study and learn new things. And even if you make a mistake, like maybe I'm not satisfied with that line, I can just go over it again. It's really meditative because you're really in the moment just looking at the person and looking at your piece of paper and following your hand and your eye. It's a great warm up exercise because you really get to make these big gestures to get your hand moving. Often when I do this, I'm really surprised with what I come up with. And I love it because it captures the essence of the person, even though it's just a few lines. I'm adding some finishing touches right here. And this is her side by side. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to the camera so you can really see it up close. And there's my mom. Hi everyone, before we keep going, I wanted to voice a question that I saw in the chat. Some people are having some trouble drawing their noses from the first version. Diane, do you have any tips on how to get the nose right when you're copying from the photograph? I do, and an artist tip is that draw, you don't look at the, the the um, subject straight on like you would in a passport photo. Even as you can see my picture in the chat, my the light is coming from one side of my face, so it creates a shadow here on my face. So we're picking, um, artists frequently make the, the job easier for them by angling the face just a slight bit so they can actually see the edge of the nose. And so that is the line that the artist follows. Drawing straight on nose is very difficult to do. But if you do, you can see, you can just draw, trace the shadow of one side of the nose and then follow it under with the under shadow. And that's what we're representing in the line drawing. You wanna make it as simple as possible, but just draw one line from the nose rather than two. That's my tip. And if you have a little more, more trouble, we'll be glad to talk to you in the chat room and you can show us your drawing and we'll be more specific or talk to you in the one-to-one -one session, sorry. I have pulled up here the drawing that Diane did with kind of an illustration of that nose where it kind of connects to the eyebrow right there. And you'll also see some more examples that we have later on by Jibin Korn and Matisse and Picasso. And it's interesting because sometimes they only draw one side of the nose or just barely anything for it. Thank you guys for asking questions. So now we'll go on to another one of our museum educators. So for this second Sunday's activity, I chose to draw my mother, who you can see here. This is my final image done with permanent marker over pencil. And I, of course, chose to draw my mom because of Mother's Day and a little bit to honor her and all that she's done to support me. And one thing I found really fun about this process was actually the original photograph with the lines on it. And I thought that that gave this original picture a bit of a cartoon-like quality, which is pretty fun. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Do you want to unmute yourself and say hi to everyone real quick? Hi, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Welcome to Second Sunday. Amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And with that, you've done it. You've made it through all the tutorials of the versions of the project. Now that you are further on in your art making, we would like to show you some examples of Diebenkorn sketches, the man whose work inspired this Second Sunday, and also show you who he was inspired by. Richard Diebenkorn traveled to art museums all around the world to view the artwork of Henri Matisse. 
Here are some line drawings made by Matisse. You can see how Matisse uses line in an expressive and lively way that makes each drawing look unique. I think these drawings are of different people. What do you think? Picasso and Matisse knew each other. You can see that they both like making portraits using line. The same line drawing technique that we are having fun with today. Now that you know how to make a contour line drawing, take a look around you. What other things are you inspired to draw? This dog is probably sleeping, so Diebenkorn used this quiet moment to make a drawing. Art making opportunities are everywhere. Grab your sketchbook and draw. Last thing, at its core, Second Sunday is all about family. And this is the last part before we go through the project again and hear from different people. Stay tuned for more new and exciting adventures. But for right now, we've had so much fun making with you. And now, from my family to yours, here's some more art making. Hi everyone, my name is Aubrey and I am an arts educator here at the Cantor. I wanted to share with you a video of the project that I was able to do with my niece and my nephew. We tried to do two of the versions together. We first began by outlining the images of our moms. Both of them thought it was really funny how the black pen made my mom's photo look and they were excited to try it with their mom's photograph too. My niece really enjoyed this part because my nephew was in her photograph. And so she got to trace over his image too. And she thought he looked hilarious. But they were very careful when it came to outlining their mom. They made sure to get all of her details, her chin, her nose, her mouth, and her eyes. I told my nephew not to worry about the lines on his mom's shirt because we wanted to make sure we only got the most important lines. Once they had completed most of their outline, they decided to show their grandpa, my dad, their finished product. He was off screen, but you can see them trying to scooch their artwork towards him. If at any point you wanna share your art with us, please request a private Zoom session with us so that we can see your great work too. My nephew loved to look over to his sister and see what she was up to, but with some help, we were able to make sure that he was ready for the second part. And I just wanted to include some scenes of us all working together because we had a lot of fun doing this and I hope that you're enjoying it as well. After our outlining was done, we began working on the first version of the project where we traced the outline. Although Diane said we should tape our image to a window, there wasn't enough space for all three of us to do it at the same time. So I improvised and found some tracing paper that we had in our house to sketch our trace our image. From there, the process was pretty much the same thing. We laid out our photograph on top and then put our copy paper over it and then started going over it with pencil. Somehow I could only find two pencils in our whole house and so I ended up using pen. My nephew was having so much fun with his photograph and imagining what his mom was doing in the scene. For some reason, he thought she was holding a rock, so he wrote, I have a rock right next to her picture. I really love how even with a photograph, he was trying to think about his mom and what she might have been feeling in that moment. Looking back, I can say that I probably should have taped it down, but we did well regardless. It actually ended up helping us a little bit because both my nephew and I realized that we hadn't gotten all of the important lines from the first part of the project. Since it wasn't taped down, it was easier for us to go back to the photograph and retrace those important lines. My nephew's pencil kept breaking, so we ended up with the pen at the end of the day but he was careful to not make any mistakes after that point. I showed them the sketch of my mom when I felt it was done and they thought it was so funny. I'll wait so that you can see. <laughs> I don't think they expected it to look too different from the photograph. And so they were very surprised when they saw the finished product because although it was based on a photograph, it definitely doesn't look exactly like that photograph. However, after they were done laughing, they tried the, their best to finish their work too.
Even though my nephew needed more assistance, my niece was fine to work on her own and concentrate on her own art, which was super cool to see. It was super cool to work with both of them like this. And here are just some more scenes of us working all together. Once my niece was done, she decided she would take a break by literally going under the table, which you'll see pretty soon, which I thought was funny. After that, my niece and nephew weren't ready to be done, so we decided to try the second version of the product, project. My niece, a self-proclaimed artist, felt that this version was easier than the sketching because she was able to incorporate her own style into what she was making. And it didn't have to look you didn't have to try to make it look exactly like the photograph by only tracing those lines in the exact way that they were shown. My nephew definitely preferred the tracing technique because in this version, he had a lot of trouble getting the right shape of his mom's face. At this point, my nephew was getting a little unfocused. And so for his first sketch, he decided to try to make his mom look as funny as possible, which is why we're all laughing. Once some of his energy was out though, he started on the project for real. I decided to do a second one as well because I wasn't completely happy with my first attempt. I had accidentally started drawing my mom's shoulders much too high up on the page, even though I was looking at the photograph. And so when it came time to draw her head, it ended up getting cut off. The second attempt came out much better though. I would have shown you all their finished projects, but my niece and my nephew made me promise not to show their work to anyone. And I had to honor that pinky promise that you just saw. In the end, we had a really lovely time together, and I hope that you guys all have a great time together too. Thank you, everybody. So now we have a little brief Q&A portion where we're gonna hear from some of the panelists. And if you have a question that you want answered, or you want our advice or something, just put it in the chat and then we'll read it aloud to everybody. Um, so without further ado, I have my first question for the panelists and anyone can answer it and answer again. So my first question is, what did you learn while doing this project? I can go first. Um, I feel like I really, really loved going through the sketching process. I think that I was kind of thinking like my niece and my nephew and expecting my artwork to look exactly like the photograph that I was borrowing from. And so to see the finished product, product and to see how different it was from the photograph was really interesting, especially in version one where I was copying directly from the photograph. And it kind of just reminded me like, even when we're trying to be super realistic in what we're doing, we always add our own artistic flair to everything. Um, because we are all artists at the end of the day. And it's just so fun to see that we'll always have some sort of individual addition to what we're doing. That's so great. I totally feel that too. Do any of the other panelists have something they'd like to say about what you learned while doing this project? Well, I'd also add in one thing I really enjoyed and found pretty fun with this is how few lines you really needed to actually see someone you recognized emerge on the paper. Um, and that, that, that I thought was pretty, pretty neat about this. It doesn't take very many, but pretty soon you have somebody you recognize. So in my case, of course, it was my mom. But. Thank you so much, Sarah. Any other last responses? Then I'll move on to the next question. Um, sort of like what Sarah was saying. Um, because you have so few lines, every additional line you add, I found really changed how the picture looked. So when I was trying to picture my mom, I couldn't figure out how to make her look happier. Because um, for some reason, it's just like, it's really hard to like capture a smile. Um, and I was worried about adding too many lines or like accentuating wrinkles. But I found that like when I drew the lines on her cheeks and the lines um, from her eyes, uh, I thought it really made her look like she was smiling. So I thought that was really cool. That's awesome. That's a really great trip too in drawing the smile because I know it's always tricky when you're drawing teeth as well. Wonderful. So I'm going to ask one more question to all of you guys and then we'll cycle back through the project. 
Um, so my next question is, if you could do the project again differently, what would you do? So I'll start off on this one. Um, I think like someone had said, um, I had quite a bit of trouble with the nose. Um, so this is a picture of my mom and I'll picture of my mom. And the nose is ah, not, not my best. And I think even though I only did one line, I think I curved it a little too much. I made it a little too bubbly, but I think it's good that like you can try once and then you can layer another paper on there and then like edit what you have already to try to make it look better. So that's super fun. I love that. Thank you so much. Any other responses about something you would do differently? I think I'd want to try version three next time too. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be super cool because I know, well, okay. I know how much fun it was to do it from a, from a photograph and to see like all the happiness that my mom had when I was taking, when I was borrowing from that picture. I think it would also be super fun to try and get like her features as I'm looking at her. So I thought that was a really cool addition to the project, Mackenzie. Now, one thing I'd like to add is think about the pose that your mom should be taking too. You notice that it's, it's easier almost to draw somebody slightly from the side in the, with a one line than it is from straight head on. So think about how you want your mom to pose with you know, maybe a hand or with her arms crossed. If you look at the Diebenkorn sketchbooks online also, and some of the examples we've shown, you'll see that the pose is also um, part of the drawing. That's wonderful. Yeah, go for it. I was gonna say, I think I would, I did version one and I think got a lot of confidence from just doing the tracing and seeing how that <laughs> turned out. But I think I'd also like to go back and try two. So drawing from that same photograph, but freehand to actually kind of compare it to the tracing and see how that might well, quite likely look different, um, but I think it would be fun to have both of those side by side. And one other thing that I did, and maybe if you have you know, a little copier at home, I took my pencil tracing and I copied it because I was afraid, I only had a permanent marker and I was kind of afraid, oh, I might mess it up. But actually, I think that might be a fun thing to do, trying different markers or actually maybe just tracing some of the lines and then I could have a few different versions that came off of my one pencil sketch. So I think that might be something I would also try. That's a great comment too, Sarah, um, because artists do that. They draw, they draw, make several drawings or they use one drawing and then they do different versions of it. So that's a, that's just a traditional way that artists work. And it's um, great to mention that. Thank you for doing yeah, that. Of course. Thank you guys so much. That was so fun to hear all of your responses. So keep making try out the first version, then maybe go to the second one and see what happens. It's really fun to learn as you go and we're so excited just to have you here today. Now we'll take a little break and look at art made by one of our museum educators. Hi everyone, it's Melissa. I wanted to share with you all some of the art that I made today for Second Sunday. I chose to draw a picture of my mom. As you can see in this picture, she's holding a sign that says, Most Beautiful Mom. It's actually based on a picture that I took of her a couple years ago when we were eating at a restaurant for Mother's Day. And the restaurant had a sign that said, Most Beautiful Mom, for all the mothers who were celebrating to take a picture with. Here's the original picture that I took of her. As you can see, I had to trace with a big brown marker so that I could put this on top and trace the lines over. I also wanted to share with you a different picture that I made for Second Sunday today. It's a tracing of a photo of my kitchen from my old house, where I grew up talking to my mom, sitting at the kitchen counter, helping her cook, learning about her life, and telling her about everything that was going on in mine. Thank you so much for sharing your artwork with us today and for letting me share my artwork with you. I hope that you've been enjoying Second Sunday, and I wanted to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Now we're going to take a look at one of our other art projects made by our student museum educators. Hi. Awesome. So now I'll play her video. Hi everyone. My name is Ashley and I'm really excited to show you what I drew for my art project. 
So this is my best friend, Mo. Um, I chose a picture of her when we were both at Big Game last year. It was really fun. Um, so this is my drawing. Um, something that really stood out to me about the process is that drawing people is really hard. <laughs> and I think once I erased all the pencil marks, it made it look a lot better. Um, I don't know if you can really recognize it to her, but <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing this. and I'm really excited to show her. Thank you so much. Hi again. At its core, Second Sunday is all about family. And this is the last part before we go through the project again and hear from different people. So stay tuned for more new and exciting adventures with us. We've had so much fun making art with you. And now from my family to yours, here's some more art making. This one's a little different from the one with my niece and my nephew because I actually got to interview my dad. So you get to hear his voice as we're making the art together. Hi everyone, this is Aubrey again, and this time I'm here with my dad, and I'll be asking him some questions about his mom. Hi guys. Is that all right with you, dad? That sounds good to me. Okay, that sounds great. So my first question is, why did you choose that picture of your mom? Oh, it's, it was black and white already, so we didn't have to render it, um, but um, it's one of my favorite pictures because you can see that she's deep in thought. It looks like she's at a professional conference of some type, and it just reminds me of her. That's awesome, Dad. Thank you. You had mentioned something about a conference, right? Yes, she was, um, she was in educational leadership. Um, she had gotten her PhD uh, way back in 1975. She was actually one of the first um, women to graduate, first black women to graduate uh, college, um, Phi Beta Kappa in 1949, so, or 1947. And um, so it's just really interesting because she was really focused on education and making sure that all six kids um, you know, we're highly educated and all went to college. And um, yeah, so, yeah, she was at a conference. I don't know what conference it was, um, but it's just a great picture because you can see her pensive, um, kind of relaxed at the same time, focused uh, concentration on, on whatever the subject matter was. Definitely. I like that. Yeah. Um, can I ask, you mentioned six kids, and I know you're the youngest of the six. <laughs> um, can I ask what your earliest memory of grandma was? Oh, my goodness. Um, probably about four years old. Uh, she used to tuck us in every night and she would tell us stories and teach us really big words at, at a very young age. Um, and so it was, I, I remember she taught me diaphanous and I was probably no more than four years old, but it was like a big word. I was like, well, what does it mean? And it was um, yeah, translucent, like a butterfly's wings are diaphanous, uh, kind of almost see through very, very gentle or very, very, um, how shall I say, fragile. Um, I don't know, other words, she used to call me obtuse, obnoxious, and obstreperous. <laughs> she didn't pull any punches. No, you. no, but, <laughs> but she did so many wonderful things that at a young age, what I remember is she would come in at nighttime and she would bring all of our, um, all of our stuffed animals to life. So she had different names for them and different voices and she would, you know, just write on the cuff, create using her mind, create a, a little story and tell us a story. And then if we were really, really, if I was really, really mad and I didn't want to talk to anybody, I would talk to my stuffed animals and they would talk back. And so she would talk to me through the stuffed animals, but I was, I was a really little, really little kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she kept us innocent and she kept us um, learning uh, and challenged us all the time. And so it was just, um, I love my mom. I miss my mom very much. Yeah, I know. Um, happy Mother's Day, you know. Yeah, definitely. The next question that I wanted to ask was, do you, what, what was your favorite thing about your mom? Like when, when you look back on your time with grandma, like what just stands out as something that like her shining, her shining point? Oh, okay. Good question. Um, I think that one of, one of the best or most memorable, um, and I don't want to say feature, uh, but just memorable um, attributes were that she was loving. She would always find the, the good in things. I mean, she wasn't a, a Pollyanna, but she would always find the... What's the, a Pollyanna? I don't know, but she used to say, I'm no Pollyanna. No, um, somebody that was just... Um, uh, Pollyanna, my understanding, would be somebody that was um, um, like ignorant of, of the surroundings and always happy. But she was very aware and um, uh, very focused, um, but she would look for the good in things. And uh, she taught us to, more than anything, to reach for the stars 
Um, she said, always, you know, reach for the stars. If, if you, you know, reach for the lamppost, you might end up in the gutter. But if, if you reach for the stars, you might not make it. But, you know, you might make it to the moon. And so it was really just it taught us to dream. I think that's probably the, the one uh, resounding in that, that our, our age or our gender or our color had nothing to do with um, our abilities. And um, learning that as a young age in this country, it, it just was really very, very powerful. Definitely. Yeah. If you could say something to your mom now, what's something that you would want to tell her? Thank you. I think more than anything else, thank you for just um, the love. Thank you for the uh, transparency, the honesty, the um, hugs. And um, just I miss her because I miss her terribly. I know you do, Daddy. All righty. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for interviewing with us, and I hope all of you are having a wonderful second Sunday. And before we go on, this is my dad's picture of my grandma. He was very, um, he didn't like it very much, but I thought it actually kind of looked like her, so it was nice and fun. I love it. Hi everyone. At its core, so second Sunday is all about family. And this is the last part before we go through the project again and hear from different people. So stay tuned for more new and exciting adventures. We've had so much fun making with you. And now from my family to yours, here's some more art making. Um, similar to last time, I was able to do another like Q&A session with my mom and asking her what it's like to be a mother and a grandmother actually. So I hope you all enjoy. Hi again, everyone. This time I'm joined by my one and only beautiful mother. And mom, is it okay if I ask you a couple of questions? Absolutely. Awesome. So the first question I wanted to ask you is why did you choose to do this picture? I can see that it has grandma and it has Kaylee, Chelsea and I, and then it has my niece and my nephew. Okay, so I don't, I, so the, because it's generational and I think I'm the only one who's missing, there's my mom and there's you guys, and then there the my grandchildren, which would be her great-grandchildren, and I thought that that was important to to show that because, you know, as, as we get older, I think we have, you know, less and less images, especially of my mom, because she doesn't like to take a lot of pictures, and so that was one that I have that I know that'll show, you know, the line of our family. Yeah, totally. And I think it does it really well, too, although my niece and my nephew look a little bit younger in this image. But they do, and that just emphasizes the point that the times, the amount of times that we gather and have all of these people together, they are few and far between. And especially with everything happening now, those, the spacings are much greater. So it makes the, that we were able to do it when we did it. That so, makes it so much more important. Definitely, Mama. My next question was how, so I'm obviously not a mom, but how does it feel to be a mom and to have been a mom for so long? Because your youngest child is 22. Yes. Yes. So you've been a mom for at least 22 years. <laughs> I've been a mom for much longer than that. But um, no, in terms of being a mom, it's an absolute, absolute blessing um, and just been a gift in my life. It was one of the things that was um, so important to me to be pivotal in your lives um, because my parents were not pivotal in mine. My mom specifically, due to circumstances, we were separated uh, when I was a child and didn't reconnect until I was pretty much a teenager. So those were a lot of lost years and I did not want to have those miss those years with you guys. So we made dad and I, you know, decided that we wanted to be, have our children and, and be integral in their lives. And that has worked out. It has been frustrating. I'm not going to lie. It has been, you know, all the things, the chaos going, you know, for different schools, um, the pickup, the, just the navigating those, those years but you look back on it and they just fly by so quickly. You can't believe. It's like I look at you and I see you're still my Abimbu who's only two. Um, and that, and I look at your face now and it seems it was just yesterday that that's where you were.
one is a little bit harder because so as parents, it doesn't matter how hard you try, you have expectations and you look at your children and you you know you recognize just like in yourself you recognize strengths and weaknesses and so with being a grandparent that's not something that you could get to decide when you're a child you can't say to your child oh i believe you're ready to be a parent that's something that they decide on their own and you may or may not always agree with that but you hope that they can be the best parent that they possibly can and in terms of my role in their lives, I ultimately always want them to know that I love them and that they're a part of me. And that, and I always say that, you know, they, they're here and I enjoy them, play with them. They can go swimming or do whatever. And then they have to go to their parents. Mm-hmm. And that, that's a hard one for me because I tend to get very attached and it's like, no, they're mine but they're not necessarily in that sense of the word. Um, and so that having, being able to maintain that dif- distance and watching your child maybe make a decision regarding their children that's not necessarily one that you would have made, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't make it wrong. Mm-hmm. It just is being able to stay, to keep that distance and to stay back and, and not overstep. I think mm-hmm. that's been the biggest hurdle. Yeah. in terms of navigating that divide. Definitely. Awesome. Well, that's actually all the time that we have for today, but thank you so much, Mama. You're welcome, my love. Mm-hmm. And I hope you all are having a wonderful Mother's Day and a great second Sunday. And before we go on, my mom didn't want to do it in a um, pen, and so it's pretty light, but this was the image that she tried to do. And so this is my grandma right here, her mom, and then my niece and my nephew, and then... Oh, there's only two of us. And then my sister and I. So it was very fun to do with her, and I think she enjoyed doing it. It looks so good. Thank you. So now we're at the live Q&A portion of our programming. So if you ask us a question right now, we'll speak it aloud, and we'll have our whole panelists um, describe the answer to you guys. Um, but just to start off, I have a couple of questions. Um, so my first one is, were you surprised by anything that came up while you were doing the project today? I think for me, it was very, oh, okay, yeah. Um, it was very surprising because I got to do it so many times with all of my family members. And just to, for me to do it a lot of times, and at first I was like very nervous about it. And then like, by the time I was interviewing my mom, I was just like, okay, yes, this is what we do, mom. This is how it works. Like we've got this figured out. But to be able to do it with so many different people and see where they get like caught up and where they, their favorite parts of it were like tracing over the big lines and seeing what they enjoyed the most. And then they got very scared during version two when they couldn't just copy the lines like they did on version one. It was so fun to see everyone's different reactions as we were working together. Thank you, Aubrey. That's such a great comment. It just reminds me that um, just like seeing art in person, there's no substitute for that virtually. Making art, putting your hands on the paper and really doing it yourself and forcing yourself to think through the whole process and making your own marks, there's no substitute for that either. So um, thank you for sharing that. Did any of the other panelists have any surprises that you encountered while you were making your project? It's great that everybody's trying lots of drawings. I have lots of drawings that I made here. They have, I have a whole pile of mine drawings. So the more you make, the more you find out and they all look a little different. Here's one. Here's one you've seen. Here's another one you've seen. And these were all made from pictures that I copied from a catalog. So these are all professional models. Although here, this is my daughter in pencil, actually. And then there are some more models. Here's Matisse 
here's the drawings that you've seen. Oh, that's Picasso. And then here's my drawing. You can see, we talked about the nose earlier. You can see Picasso actually did both sides of the nose, but he did a, a very symmetrical drawing. And so he balanced that out with, with the sort of the whole hair. And let's see, what else do I have? So I made a whole, I have a lot, a lot, a lot of drawings here. And for me, that's not very, uh, that's enjoyable to do. Here's my daughter again. So for Happy Mother's Day, here's her ink version. So you can see I posed, I chose a picture where the nose is sideways again, because it is, I know it's easier to draw that way. So this is all something you may have learned that posing the model is, is part of the process. So um, choosing your photograph for your model's pose is great. So thank you all. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Diane. Thank you for showing all those examples too. Um, I'm curious, did any of you guys notice a big difference from when you were doing the pencil version versus the marker version or had one that you preferred? Did you find the pencil helpful in making the marker version? Um, and yeah, how did that part of the process go for you? I actually um, noticed that it was very hard to do. Um, I had trouble with the marker version personally because I felt like the pencil version was, you had these big black lines that you were able to see through the window and like you could definitely trace it out. But then it was sometimes harder for me to see the pencil underneath the black marker to trace back over those lines. Um, and so I think that the black marker was like, I was used to how rigid the pencil was in terms, I'm holding a pen, but I was used to how rigid the pencil was in terms of like, how, like, I don't know, it felt different outlining with the pencil than compared to the marker. And I liked how it felt outlining the pen with the pencil better than I did with the marker. Interesting. They, they do have different feelings to it. I'm putting them both on paper. And then I think we had, um, so one of our, our panelists used an actually an iPad to be the under under part for the drawing instead of a window, which makes a lot of sense because it's like using a light table to trace over. So um, lots of good suggestions out there. So we have lots of ideas for if you don't have um, all of the materials. Um, yeah, try to work your way around it and we can help you come up with ideas too. Any other last comments? Um, I can go. Yeah. So for, for me, I found myself trying to, when I was drawing with pencil, I found myself really tempted to try to include more um, detail because with pencil, it's like very natural to create shading. And it's like very, um, that's like what graphite is so great for in pencil. And then when I, um, the challenge was going to the marker, like really stripping it down and trying to get just what was necessary to convey like the the picture I can show. This is the picture of my mom that I traced off of. And then this was my drawing that I ended up with. I think it looks pretty much kind of like her. So that was kind of fun. Um, I tore it out of my sketchbook that I had. Um, and I thought that was kind of cool having to like take a step back and be like, what do I really need to express what I'm trying to say here? You mentioned a sketchbook. We had one of our panelists earlier flip through her sketchbook and it was really fun to see. And we're trying to encourage everyone that's here today to try keeping a sketchbook and to keep all these drawings together and show kind of the progression of what you're learning and what you're making and how fun of a process it is. Line drawing is one of the building blocks. So once you have a line drawing like this, you can also take, um, things like pastel or oil pastel or even paint and, and you know, work over it with the paint and pastel and that'll change it again completely. So you, although you're copying um, a previous drawing, it's, it's, think of it as a building block that you're just, um, this is just part of the step or it could be a finished work on its own. It works in printmaking and painting drawing with pastels, um, so many different areas. So 
the sketchbook is a really great tool to keep track of all your ideas visually like this instead of writing them down. You may come back to them in 10 years and say, that was a really great drawing. I want to make it a painting now. And so that's the way it works. So here we are, thinking like artists. And I'm so happy you're all joining me doing this today. Thank you. Now let's take a look at art from one of our student museum educators. And she's actually here with us right now. Laurel, do you want to say hi? Hi, everybody. I'm Laurel. Awesome. So here's her video. Hi there. So for my piece, I decided to take a picture of my mom and uh, use the process. So I took this picture of my mom to create this drawing. And one thing that stood out to me about the process, I have a lot of anxiety when it comes to drawing people and especially faces because they're so challenging and it usually takes so much time to try to get something right. But using this process, I was able to see more easily like which things stood out the most and then be able to create something that actually does look like her. So I'm excited to see how this maybe influences how I see different sorts of things when I create new pieces of art of people. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you everybody and um, for answering all these questions and all our panelists that were here today. It was so incredible to have your perspective on everything and for your awesome videos and for doing the project along with us. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone and how much fun it was to put this together, but then also to just see your smiling faces on Mother's Day. And don't forget to check in on the website to see part of our recorded program from this uh, Sunday. So we'll record some excerpts that you can revisit online at the Candor website. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, everyone. We hope we had so much fun with you and we hope you had fun with us as well. Thank you. Bye. Happy Mother's Day. Bye, everybody. Thank Happy you.